Hey guys, I just wanted to do my review of Agent Carter Season 2 Episode 5 and at the atomic job. It turns out that after killing the man from killing the man from last week's episode, that Wendy Frost wants to get access to atomic bombs because she wants to repl replicate the zero matter ground the zero matter um atomic ex atomic bomb test that was in the footage shown in the first two episodes so um agent so peggy is trying to but basically and this comes after um i guess like dr wilkes is able to get a sample of like a, like a piece of, i guess like a piece of um I guess Sousa gave Peggy like something like a piece of um Jane Scott's body, the woman the dead woman from the season premiere provided to Peggy and then Dr. Wilkes noticed there was um some of the zero matter in the sample and he was able to absorb it, which made him temporary corporeal but and then he realized he was he was able to sense like where um Jane Scott's body was. It was in a warehouse that Jarvis and Peggy went to go check out, and they saw Chadwick and Frost find the body before they did through an air vent, and watch, um, basically watch uh, Frost absorb any of the zero matter from Jane Scott, Jane Scott's corpse into her own, into her own body, and she said she need, and that's when she wanted, she said she needed the atomic bombs. Luckily, um, Stark and Jarvis were involved in corporate espionage and knew that Roxin, Roxin Corporation held some atomic bombs that, that they would need access to, and, um, they also just talked about, I was talking about how they need to get the key from Jones, a villain from last season who was also part of the Council of Nine. Um, and luckily, there a doctor named Samber Samberly was able to provide like a um, device for like wiping for memory wipes in that lasts for like two minutes, and it provided this like really funny gag where like Peggy would break in acting as a secretary, and then. Jones would would think like he wouldn't remember her initially as, as agent. He she he come in. Peggy would use the device on him to like on his head to like wipe his memory, but then he'd come back in, come back into the room. Peggy would have to wipe his memory again, and he, she probably had to do this like multiple times before she realized that the key to access the rocks and vault with the bombs. Was in his belt. Was in his um belt buckle, and she she gets it, and they basically go into the building where well first like they need like most, or first they need like all the help they can get. So they reluctantly bring Samberly, who guilt trips them into bringing them along because one he has. He knows how to use the devices they need to get into the building. Technical expertise, and second, because he's let, he goes trips Susa because he says, "Oh, I never. You told me you're the one that hired me. You're the one that promised me that I'd be able to use my technical expertise out in the fields, and I've been in the lab all the time." And then, and then, Peggy convinces Susa to bring Rose along, the redheaded secretary. Because they feel like she's the only one who hasn't been like bought out, you know, bought out or it, or is in league with the Council of Nine, so that's why they so so they're able to break in. Rose is able to. She's pretty much even though she hasn't she doesn't have field experience. She's pretty combat ready. Is able to hold her own in combat. Samberly is able to use the. Is able to hack in the security system and is able to get into the vault with the two atomic bombs but accidentally locks Jarvis Jarvis in so even though Sousa was the one training to remove the 
uranium rods from the atomic bombs, he has to talk Jarvis through removing them and putting them into a crate. And Peggy Carter gets into this big fight with um with Whitney Frost, and she falls off a ledge and gets impaled on some rebar. And so basically, they take they have to take Peggy to get treated by Violet, who is Sousa's current girlfriend, who he actually proposed to earlier in the episode. But even though she gets healed up and Jarvis and Peggy insists that Jarvis take her back to the Stark mansion, Violet starts to realize that Sousa still has some lingering feelings for Peggy and she realizes that she's like the rebound girl. He like he was this run he wasn't he didn't come to California looking for a fresh start like he Sousa claimed he was looking, he was running away from Peggy, he's running from Peggy, and it cuts, to, and when Violet asks if Sousa still loves her, we never hear an answer, it just cuts to the fact that, cuts to a scene between Violet and, not Violet, Frost and Chadwick, in which, like, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want, he wants out, he doesn't want to do Frost any more favors, he doesn't want to owe any favors to, like, a known criminal who was an ex-boyfriend of Frost and and made it pretty clear that he still, the, that the mob, that the criminal still has feelings for her basically because, like, he basically beat the crap out of somebody who was, like, checking her out when they met at the restaurant but then he threat, I guess the basically Frost threatens her life, th threatens Chadwick's life, and just to keep him in line, and he seems utterly terrified, and basically says that he doesn't know, utterly terrified, but then he decides to call the Council of Nine and let them know about Frost's new abilities, and the episode ends with, even though Peggy's being tucked in by Jarvis, is that, um, basically... Dr. Wilkes starts disappearing and the pet can no longer see him and starts panicking about the situation. So overall, a pretty, so um, pretty solid episode. And I've been watching the other reviews of, well, I guess I could say Source Fed Nerd. Um, you know, criticizing the show, like, feeling like they're not sure if they like this direction that their show's going in because they felt like season one was more of a spy show. And I do agree with him that season two has been feels like more like a nineteen forties like X Files kind of thing. I personally think maybe they're just trying to do it just to make the season two stand on its own and feel different and not feel like a rehash of season one. So I can so I'm I'm more forgiving of that. I mean I mean what do you I mean what do you guys think? Do you like season two of Agent Carter or season one of Agent Carter? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, like, share, and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.